In this lecture, I plan to analyze the stream vibration problem, which generate a PDE. And uh, the PDE will be solved completely by the method of separation of variables. We have seen this uh, slide uh, earlier in the last lecture. If we have a stream fixed at uh, two ends, one is at uh, x equal to zero, the other one is set at x equal to L. If we disturb the stream, it will vibrate vertically. Small vibrations can be described by this diffraction unit, U. U is going to be a function of positions along the stream and uh, it will also depend on time during the vibration. And uh, from the force balance in the vertical di direction and the horizontal direction, we can combine and uh, eventually generate a PDE like this. In the deviation of this equation, we have impose three assumptions. The first assumption says the mass of the stream per union length is constant. That means we have a homogeneous stream. The density of the stream remains constant during this small vibration. Number two, we assume the mass is uh, so small, so the gravitational force of the stream is negligible. When we take the force balance in the vertical direction, we ignore the mass, the gravity force applied to the stream. Only the tension applied to the stream will cause the vibration. And the third assumption states the trans transverse motion of the stream is strictly in the vertical direction and it's very small. So um, we can uh, use this assumption to, to take the force balance easily. Uh, after we get this equation, um, we need to find four boundary conditions to solve this equation. Two of them are associated with x, two are associated with the time. So you, I should say two conditions, two boundary conditions, and the two initial conditions will be needed to solve this uh, differential equation completely. And uh, boundary conditions are relatively easy to stipulate because the two n are fixed. They don't move. So at the x equal to zero, at arbitrary time, the diffraction is zero. Similarly, at the other end, at x equal to l, at any arbitrary time, the diffraction is zero. And uh, for the initial conditions, we stipulate at uh, t equal to zero, the initial diffraction is f of x. It's a function of x. So that means it's a sufficiently general uh, we don't stipulate the specific initial condition at the outset. So the solution of this problem will allow us to apply a set 
of problems. And um, the last initial condition states at the time we go to zero, the partial derivative of u with respect to time equal to a given function g of x. This condition states the velocity is given, initial velocity is given. Again, uh, we don't specifically state what the form of g of x is, so the solution can be applied to a family of problems. So these three equations will allow us to solve u as a function of x and t completely. Let's begin. As so I said in the last lecture, the method of separating variables always start from the assumption that uh, the solution can be considered a product of uh, two parts. One part involves x only, the other part involves t only. So uh, once we substitute this equation into the given partial differential equations, the left hand side give us f times g second order derivative of g and the right hand side give us f double prime times g both g dot dot f double prime designate second order derivatives. If we combine these two expressions put into the original equation, we get this form. And uh, now remember what we are going to do next. We would like to separate the variables, leaving the factors of x on one side and the leave factors of t on the other side. So we get this equation. The c is a material constant in the given PDE. We usually leave it on the, on the side that involve <coughs> time. The reason is we're going to solve the f first. Then we don't want to carry the c square all the time. Um, the result will be the same if we leave c square on the right hand side. Then what we do next is um, we have this equation, we can make the argument we discussed last time. The right hand side is a function of x only. Left hand side is a function of t only. But the, the given equation has to satisfy a wide domain of x and t. And the only condition that allows us to find the solution is both sides equals a constant. That way we can generate two ordinary differential equations. If we combine these two, we get the first equation combined. This part, we get second equation. Notice Equation five and six are both ordinary differential equations. K is not known yet. So this is a typical 
eigenvalue, eigenfunction problems. We have to find the k value along the solution for f. So it's a very important to recognize this is an eigenvalue, eigenfunction problem. Once we use this equation, uh, so once we solve this equation, we get a set of eigenfunctions, eigenvalues, then this k value can be put in here in the soft g. This is exactly the way we are going to solve the problem. We're going to solve equation five first. And this is second order OD. And in order to solve this equation, we need the two boundary conditions. Remember, we have two boundary conditions at the outset. You at the position zero at any arbitrary time equal to zero. And the second boundary condition is similar at the arbitrary time t at the position x equal to l, the diffraction is always zero. If we put our assumption that u is a product of f times g, we get this relation. Notice g at any arbitrary time cannot be zero. If this is true, we have a trivial solution for the given problem. So this equation give us F zero has to be zero. Similarly, if uh, we put the initial assumption into this equation, we get F evaluate the L times G and any arbitrary time equal to zero. Uh, this equation states G at any arbitrary time cannot be zero. If this is true, we get the trivial solution um, U. So the only condition tells us, only boundary condition available to us will be F evaluate x equal to L equal to zero. So with this two boundary condition and uh, this ODE, we should be able to solve the problem. Recognize the fact that K is not stipulated at the outset. So it's an eigenvalue, eigenfunction problem. Then as we discuss in the last chapter. It is a second order ODE. We can use characteristic equation to solve it. However, a characteristic equation generates three cases. K equal to zero. K uh, is greater than zero or K smaller than zero. If k equal to zero, <clears throat> f equal to a linear function, ax plus b, substituting the two boundary condition in, we will have a trivial solution. So it's not of interest to us. So case two, we assume the k value is positive. So we write k equal to mu squared. Then the solution involved two exponential functions. And then like we went through uh, last time, this will give us trivial solution after we put the boundary condition in. Both will vanish. So the only case which will allow us to find solution is for negative k. So at this moment, we assume k equal to negative p squared. p squared is going to be a positive number. So the 
equation we saw on the last slide becomes uh, f double prime plus p squared times f equal to zero. And uh, the solution of this equation involves cosine and the sine. Then we put the first boundary condition in, f zero equal to zero, we get a equal to zero. So now we know only the sine function can be the solution and uh, they are the icon functions. And uh, putting the second boundary condition in, FL equal to B times sine PL equal to zero, the only condition <clears throat> was satisfied this equation is PL equal to M pi. So that's what we did before many times. So the eigenvalue p equal to m pi over l. n is a positive integer. Eigenfunctions equal to sine m pi x over l. Now with uh, f already being solved, we can come back and solve g. We know the governing equation for G look like this. Second order partial derivative of G with respect to time plus lambda square G equal to zero. Now this lambda N is not a single value. It equals, it equals C M pi over L. We put this into the coefficient for g, we get this expression. The solution for this equation involves cosine and sine because this is a positive quantity. Then, oh sorry, um, if um, we combine Gn, notice the subscript n designate uh, the nth, nth solution for G. F has numerous uh, functions can satisfy this uh, original given differential equation. So is G. For each n, there is Fn correspond to the given n. For each g, we have different eigenvalues here. We have different solution for g sub n. Now, if uh, we use the initial condition to solve this equation, to solve the two coefficients, uh, notice we have two coefficients still need to be found. Um, we use the first boundary, con uh, first initial condition to find BM. But before we do that, <clears throat> we write the U sub M as a combination of product of F and GN. If we write the long form, uh, this portion is for F, this portion, long portion is for G sub M. Putting them together, we get this form. And then if, um, we put the, then together, we said, uh, obviously, if uh, we have this uh, x, uh, t equal to zero, we have sine reduced to zero, 
cosine equal to one. We have a sine function. Obviously, a single u sub n cannot be the given initial condition. It can be arbitrarily given function. It does not necessarily have to be a sine function. Therefore, we conclude a single function of u sub n cannot satisfy the given initial condition, cannot find the full solution for the given PDE. Then we look at the combination, combination of u sub n, all possible combination, put it in there. So this is the long form of the solution. This is g sub n, this is f sub n. Then at this moment, we are ready to insert the first bundle condition at the arbitrary time, uh, no, at the time equal to zero, u at the arbitrary x equal to the simple function f of x. Remember now, bn is a coefficient we want to find. bn appear in the solution. There are two group of coefficients we need to find. One is bn, the other one is bn star. So we use the first initial condition. We can find this condition. Now, remember what this expression is. If uh, f of x is given initial condition, initial diffraction, bn is not known. Is this Fourier sign representation of a given function f? If we recognize this equation, this portion of the equation is the Fourier sign series representation of f, then bn from last chapter, we can write in this form. So now we have another group of coefficients need to be found. That's bn start. bn star says the initial velocity is given. Initial velocity is the derivative of u with respect to t. Evaluate the t equal to zero. So we take the derivative of uh, the known solution, the cosine term becomes sign, negative sine with a lambda n taken out of the sign. And uh, the derivative of a sine term become a cosine term with lambda n appear before the cosine term too. Then we evaluate this uh, expression at the t equal to zero, we have this expression. Remember g of x is the given velocity. Then recognize this is essentially, sorry, this uh, bn star times lambda n is essentially the Fourier sine coefficient of the given function g of n, g of, uh, g of x. And uh, then we can solve this uh, product, bn star times lambda n equal to this uh, Fourier coefficient. Substituting lambda n into this expression and move lambda n to the other side, we have this coefficient solved. Now we are ready to solve some examples. Let me switch to the study guide.
this is a, a summary of uh, what we have talked about in this session. We have a given differential equation look like this. Two boundary conditions <clears throat> and the two initial conditions. <clears throat> One initial condition represent the initial diffraction. The second initial condition represent initial velocity. It's a derivative of u with respect to t at t equal to zero. And the solution <coughs> involves in infinite number of terms. And this portion is g sub m. This portion is sine of x, uh, f of x. And uh, based on what we saw uh, moments ago, the two coefficients are essentially the Fourier coefficients of f and the g. These are the f and g. Um, so this is a summary of the most important result we got from the first part of this lecture. Then <coughs> <coughs> then let's look at the example. If we are given the initial diffraction like this, that this shape represents if we pull the string at an arbitrary point in the string at t equal to zero, then release it we would like to see what the motion look like. In order to get the Fourier coefficients in the solution, we know this is the equation uh, Bn involves integrals of uh, product between f and the sine functions. So we have to express F in terms of a given mathematical formula. One of the skills this uh, course requires you to do is uh, you shall be able to generate equation from a sketch. You should be able to generate a sketch from a equation. Let's see how we generate this portion of the equation. I can break it into two parts. One is from zero to A. The other part is for A to L. For a linear function, we know a specific expression for a linear equation is governed by two points. For the first segment, we know it pass through the origin and the a, x, the coordinate a and x. So from the assumption f equal to a, a constant c1 x plus C2. There are two equations. We have two pieces of information, so we should be able to generate this linear form. Alternatively, if you have experience, you know the slope has to be k divided by L. So you can immediately tell this equation look like this. The interception term is zero because it passed through the origin. The second segment of the equation may be slightly more difficult to get. But if we assume y equal to c1 times x plus c2, 
with uh, two pieces of information given, we should be able to solve the two co-options and then write, generate this uh, linear equations. After this linear equation, two linear equations are generated, we can obtain the Fourier coefficient by breaking it into two segments, one from zero to A, the other from A to L. Just put in F here, second segment, leave the two second segment. This integral <coughs> involves integration by parts uh, two times, I believe. Uh, so uh, it's not very difficult, but uh, pr please practice your integration skills. Uh, you can generate, uh, it took me a few hours to finally generate the solution like this. Okay. <clears throat> Then uh, I want to mention a function called union step function. Union step function essentially cut off the function at the x equal to zero. For x below zero, the function value is cut off, assume it's zero, and the remain the function value for x greater than zero is retained as it is. So the negative x portion of the function is eliminated. This is how it works. The product of a union step function multiplied by an arbitrary function essentially retains only the positive side. Now, here the second term, I can eliminate the section greater than x a. For x greater than a, this function will go indefinitely. So I would like to subtract it out. This is a shift. We shift the union uh, step function to x equal to a. Multiplied by f, that means we have a negative function, which is add on to this. So that means the combination of these two terms retains only the function value between x equal to zero and x equal to a. And uh, this is the second part of the f between x equal to a and x equal to l. We multiply by this union step function shifted to a. So this function f can be represented by the union step function like this. See, in Mascai, it's designated by phi. And uh, I'm going to show you the power of Mascai. It uh, it simplify our uh, calculation time significantly. This two equation represent the Fourier coefficient can be obtained by through the mass cap. Before you blink your eyes, mass cap already generate this integral for you. Remember how troublesome this 
integration could be, it takes you a couple hours to generate this integral with a confidence. But in MathCAD, we can generate the result within a fraction of a second. Now, let me show you. <coughs> MathCAD can actually sketch the vibration. First, we put all the parameter in, and this is a given F initial diffraction. I just want to plot it in this way. Uh, this is a strict plot from this given function. Notice I use the units step function. Turn out this is exactly what I wanted. And uh, then I define BM. This is the integral, integrated result. I let the mask integrate in the previous slide. So I put in as a BM. Then the interesting thing is in MassCAD graphic, I plot the motion at uh, different times. So this is t. This is the diffraction at t equal to zero. A short moment later, it diffracts like this. So this is interesting to know. We can simulate the result by using this uh, definition of u, we can see the motion in graphic form. This second worksheet, instead of use, using union step function, I break it into two parts. MassCAD has this uh, command you can activate this symbol so you can put in two segments of the function separately and the bn is same as what i generate we can generate the same result and then uh, this slide is some more advanced i'm not going to ask you to do it this just a example that shows you you can generate motion a movie you can actually see the motion uh, like a movie uh, i'm going to skip it but i want to show you this is a feasible ms cab finally let me show you another example if we know the solution and uh, this Given initial conditions uh, are slightly different from the last example. It shows the initial diffraction is zero, but the initial velocity is given into two different segments. Uh, we can use the Co-option we generated earlier of this lecture, this and this portion. So if f equal to zero, bn equal to zero. If gn involve two parts, we can plug in and uh, integrate the Fourier quotient and the sine function, integrate two parts, and uh, then uh still we can this time consuming process in MathCAD we can break into two parts using symbolic operator and the MathCAD again can demonstrate that the initial diffraction is zero but motion is not zero so uh, we can see the motion like this to this this then come back, come back. 
So this is an interesting scene to me. You can see the motion in Mescal. Uh, let me stop right here. The study guide does have uh, more examples. This is very complicated. Uh, if uh, between zero to L is uh, 10 times pi, so it's somewhere around here. Uh, if we put up two fingers right here and the stretch the stream, at the time equal to zero, we release it. We would like to see the motion. This is the interesting result. I got, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Um, just this representation is needed. Then Fourier coefficient. I let the, my PC to do the hot work. So this integral is very con time consuming even for computer. But uh, take about half hour, one hour, it generate this result. Basically, it shows the main peak split into two peaks. One move to the right, one move to the left. So this is, I also create a movie clip. Uh, this is a very interesting to see the result. Okay, uh, let me conclude our talks at this moment.